been five years since the third edition of How the Brain Learns, and enough information has come forth in, those, in that period of time that it seemed to make sense to do a fourth edition. Some of the things I concentrated on in this new edition were memory systems. We've had some new understandings about how our memory works. And of course, when you ask teachers how long do they want their students to remember what they've learned, everyone says forever. But we know it doesn't work that way. So understanding how working memory, the temporary memory, processes information and understanding the kinds of criteria the brain uses to decide where to store information was pretty important new stuff. And I thought teachers ought to have that information at their command so they can plan their lessons accordingly. Another thing that's happened, of course, is the explosion of technology. Not just the new gadgets, but also social media and the impact that's had on students. One question I often get is, Hasn't this technology shortened the attention span of kids? The answer to that is actually no. What the technology is doing is increasing the demand, the demand for their attention. But once they decide what they want to work on, boy, they can give all the attention they want to that. So what happens is that the technology starts to compete with teachers in the classroom. Are there ways around that? You bet there are. And I make some suggestions about that in this book. And another major piece I've added to it is the understanding of how the arts contribute to creativity, to enhance memory, and to develop those spatial skills. Too often, um, people in society look at arts as the frills. And when budgets get tight, too often it's the arts that get cut first. That doesn't make sense. The arts stimulate creativity. And besides, think of this, the major problems facing our planet are not going to be solved by, by logical single answer problems. If they could, they would have been solved already. They're going to be solved by creative people, people who think outside the box. And we should be, we should be encouraging those kind of subjects, such as the arts, which enhance creativity. One of the most common comments that teachers hear from kids is, why do I have to know this? When will I ever use this? Students often don't see real world applications to what they're learning in school. And again, that's becoming even more important today because of the demands on their attention. So to be successful in trying to help kids understand subjects such as math, where they often say, when am I ever going to use this, is to have real world applications. Get outside the classroom. Go on more field trips. Show the applications of your subject to the real world. Let them see how math can build a beautiful, um, a beautiful structure, a beautiful building. Let them see the ways in which science contributes to, the, to our health and safety of, of our society. When they see real-world applications, then the learning becomes relevant. And remember, one of the two criteria that the brain uses to decide whether to remember something are sense and meaning, or relevancy. So when you help kids see the relevancy of what they're learning to their real world, you can increase dramatically the chances that they're going to remember it.